You see, a lot of people, correction, a lot of haters were calling yesterday's Cleveland-Tennessee game a show-me game for the Browns. Like, show me something. Prove to me that you're legit. Prove that you aren't just getting fat on a bunch of cupcakes and tomato cans. Prove that you can go on the road and beat somebody who matters. Prove that you can go on the road and beat a really good team in their house. And a lot of the same haters and doubters were directing that prove it attitude right at America's quarterback, Baker Mayfield. They were looking at America's quarterback and saying, right, yeah, sure, your team's won eight games, but what have you done? They're not winning because of you. They're winning in spite of you. The haters went on. You're overrated. You've been along for the ride. They can't win big games with you. Now, not me, of course. Not me, because I've had the back of America's quarterback this entire time. But a huge chunk of America is constantly coming for this guy. Always running that noise. Always talking all that junk. Like, 8-3 8-3 and three was not good enough. Like being a playoff lock was not good enough. Like the freaking Cleveland Browns making the playoffs was not good enough. Like being the guy who was leading this team to the playoffs for the second time this century still was not good enough for a lot of you haters. So, yes, they were calling this a show-me and prove-it game for Baker Mayfield. Yeah, well, he showed y'all. And then he shoved it all right up your rectum. Damn near killed him. Rectum. Damn near killed him. 20 for 25. 290 yards. Thank you, Alvy. Rectum. Damn near killed him. 20 for 25. 290 yards. Four touchdowns in the first half. So did that show you something? Did that prove anything? Oh, and one of the five incompletions in that first half was a drop TD. Crucial first down conversion. Man, I love that. And all this hate and all this noise about Baker. He's too short. He's not good enough. Yeah, let me tell you something. How many quarterbacks in that league are going to make that play? How many are athletic enough to go up and get that ball, secure it, and then get both feet down to move the chains? Not many. How many coaches would even ask their QB1 to try something like that? Not many. And if Jarvis Landry to Baker Mayfield is good, how about Baker Mayfield to Jarvis Landry? Nice, right? That was nice. And you know what's even better than Baker Mayfield to Jarvis Landry? Baker Mayfield to Kendall Lamb might be the four best letters in all of sports. FGTD. Fat guy touchdown. 17 nothing Browns. Man, they walk right into Tennessee's house and start to punch them in the face and kept doing it. Except, you know the Titans. You know they're not some glass jaw Joe. You knew they'd eat a couple to give one. And you knew they would punch their way off the ropes. And they did. And they came back to score. And that made it 17-7. to And then at that point, all the haters came rushing right back in. Right back in. Like, cool. Browns got off to a nice start on the road. Except the Titans are going to come back. The Titans are going to walk them down. The Browns are not going to be able to handle the pressure of a big lead on the road in a big game. Wrong. Perfection. Wide ass open and a perfect dime from America's quarterback. So, yes, you're right. The Browns won't be able to handle a 10-point lead on the road. They will turn it into a 17-point lead in a second. And, again, that was not some busted coverage. That was a perfect play action. And the Titans bit hard on that perfect play action. But they weren't done. They got up on the Titans, and they just kept pounding. They forced a three and out. Then they went on an 11 play, 90-yard drive, capped off by this to Hollywood. Four touchdowns on the day. They're not even at halftime. 31 to 7. More than five minutes to go in the first half. 31 points against a Titans D. Man, that's a great game for most teams. Except that wasn't even the first half for the Browns, and they still weren't done. The defense forces another three and out. The Browns go on another nine-play drive that ends in a TD. 38-7 Browns at the half, on the road, against the Titans. So if you were looking for a statement, that was it.
go on the road and dominate a good, really physical Titans team in their house. And yes, they eased up in the second half because they could. They shifted into a lower gear because they had that ability and the game was already won. What they did was they geared down. They saved some for their next brawl. That game was never in doubt. They were doing what great teams do in December. They were being smart. So let me get to the Mayfield haters right now. Let me ask you something. Do you still think this guy can't pass? Because he just became the first Browns quarterback since Otto Graham to have four touchdown passes in the first half. And my guy Otto, the literal OG. I mean, the literal OG. My guy wore number 60 that year. So if you're doing something that hasn't been done since quarterbacks were rocking offensive lineman numbers, then you're really doing something. And as Mayfield said afterwards, channeling the office. His philosophy really is quite simple. I'm loving the way this guy is channeling pop culture, too, after every win. You never know what he's going to come with. He was then also asked about the toe-tap reception he had to convert on that third down. That toe-tap was brilliant. I like it. I like it. It paid off. Legend. Let me ask you this. Do you still think that the Browns can only win by running the football and Ding up on people? Do you still think that the Browns are a paper champion, a paper tiger, who puffed up their record on crappy teams? Hell, what do I know? What do I know? I'm just a dude on a mic 1,500 miles away. The hell do I know? Let the people who are in it tell you. People like Nick Chubb. There you go. That's Nick Chubb saying, that's the baker I know. That's the guy. He was on fire. He led us to a victory. Kevin Stefanski knows this too. You know, if you were thinking that they would just do what you think they do and hand that game over to the running backs and then let Baker just kind of drive the bus, then you don't know those guys. The coach does, though. He put the game in Baker's hands, and he let him win it. Here's one other note. Baker was asked after the game if he had a sense for how the Browns, Browns fans felt after the win. This was his response, and it's awesome. America's quarterback fronting America's team. I love hearing that from that guy. That's what I'm talking about. They did not set out to be 9-3. and three. They did not come here to take part. They came here to take over. That's a message to Browns fans and a warning to the rest of the bleeping world. If you didn't know, now you know. And if you had been listening to me all this time, you would have known. Nine and three. And I'm not surprised at all. That is for you. Dear Rome, did you say Otto Graham? That was my first quarterback, man. Regards Frank Gore. Francis and Glendale wore Rich Flores using broken candy canes as AirPods. Did I miss that memo about Flores being a bum? No bum smack. Maybe you missed that memo. Get off of Frank Gore. Like, the guy suffered a concussion yesterday. Total stud, still playing, still playing at a high level in a horrible situation. Man, get off this guy's back already. Matt Mickler. Matt Mickler, I mean, that's his actual handle for Twitter. It's kind of like Mark Moda or Wes Weckler, except Matt Mickler. Hey, at Matt Mickler, do you know Wes Weckler? I'm going to give you one more shot, Alvy. Thank you. Hey, at Matt Mickler, are you friends with at Wes Weckler? Wes Weckler? Anyway, I don't know whether or not Matt Mickler knows Wes Weckler, but he did tweet, quote, best segment ever. Keep it coming. We are fired up in Cleveland. We could drop the next four and be nine and seven. Fine by me. Hashtag we want Pittsburgh. I feel you, Meckler. Good job, Matt Meckler. Wes Weckler appreciates it. Chris no longer in St. Pete. Quote, yes. I ran the Fat Matt Pat account. Signed, Louise Slungpoo.
It's not Louise. It's Lewis. And it's not slung pew. It's slung poo. Nothing better than some troll calling the local news and then correcting the anchor on how to pronounce a name that he made up that was not his name. And then doing what slung pew then did.